Now, how can we handle the submission of this form then? Well, to handle that, we need to go back to our template, first of all. Because there, you probably know that you control what happens when this button is clicked by setting the right attributes on this form HTML element. To be precise, you can set the action and the method attribute here. Method controls which type of HTTP request will be sent. And we have get or post available here. Get is um, the default, but actually we want post here because post is the most standard and common way of submitting user entered data to a server. This will send a post HTTP request. Action then defines the URL to which this request should be sent. And this URL is of course up to you, but here I want to send it to this meetup details uh, URL again. Why to this URL and not a different one? Because if the user enters something invalid here, let's say test at test without .com at the end or anything like that, then I want to present this page again and show an error message to the user. So that's why I want to send this request to this um, existing URL instead of a brand new one, because I potentially might want to show this existing page again. And because that's the case, the URL I want to send my request to can be constructed with the URL tag here. And then here, I just want to point at meetup-details and use meetup.slug as a value for my slug. Because meetup details, of course, is this path and we need to provide a value for this dynamic slug segment. Now that will send a post request to that URL when we click this button. So now the form can be submitted. But actually we would be getting an error here because there is a default security mechanism built into Django when we submit forms. To ensure that we prevent cross-site request forgery attacks, an attack pattern where an attacker basically uh, rebuilds your site, so the visuals of your site on some other server, and um, then utilizes the fact that visitors might not see that they're on a different page to then trick visitors to do something they don't want to do. To prevent this attack pattern, we add another tag here, the CSRF token tag. That injects a cross-site request forgery token, a prevention mechanism, so to say, into this form. And that token is generated by the Django server and only the Django server knows the valid token. And if some attacker rebuilds your site on their own server to then send requests to your server, doing other things behind the scenes as users might think though, then this attacker won't have this token because it's generated by your server and your attacker's server can't know it. So that's why this token is added as a security mechanism in this form here. More information about CSRF attacks can be found in a separate article, which I'll also attach to this video here. So that's something we have to add. But now with that, the form can technically be submitted. Now we also have to handle the form submission in our view though, because that is where the request will arrive ultimately. And that's now where things get interesting. Up to this point, this view only handled GET requests if a user enters a URL like this in the browser or clicks a link that leads to this URL. Now, since we send a POST request here to the same URL, we also need to handle POST requests here. And we want to do different things if we got an incoming POST request than we do if we have an incoming GET request. If we have a GET request, we want to return our meetup details template. If we have a POST request, we want to validate the user input and maybe return this template again. But also maybe if the forum validation succeeds, save that data to the database and redirect the user to some confirmation page, which we have yet to add. 
And that's why here I will add a if check and check if request method is equal to get. So if we got a get request like this. If that's the case, then I want to do what I did before. Else, if we got a post request, then I want to do something else. Surprisingly, I guess. Now, what I want to do in the else case is I want to validate the user input. And for this here, we can create registration form again by instantiating it. But now we pass request.post to it. The incoming request, which we get by Django, will have a post property, which contains any submitted data that might be attached to the incoming post request. So in our case, the submitted form data. And we're now passing this to registration form. And the Django then will automatically parse that uh, submitted post data and map it to the expected fields we have in that form. And we can then call is valid on this registration form to trigger validation and return true if it succeeds or false if it fails. And it would fail, for example, if test at test is submitted. This is not a valid email address and is valid would fail. Therefore, I want to check if is valid succeeds, because if that's the case, if this returns true, then I want to store my data in the database. And that's now super simple. Since we use a form that inherits from model form, all we got to do is we have to call registration form dot save. And this will now save a new entry for the model on which our form is based to the database. So that will do all the behind the scenes work of adding a new registration to the database. Now I want to point out that with this approach of calling save here and using a model form, we will actually only be able to use an email address once across all meetups. And that will not be the final behavior we want and we'll fine tune it later. But for the moment, that's just a little restriction I want to make you aware of so that you don't get confused if you then soon try this on your own and you try running this app and you're not able to use the same email address to sign up for different meetups. That is a restriction we'll work on later. And calling save will also return an instance of the saved uh, model. So a participant in our case. So this returns the participant that was inserted into the database. And we need that participant to then also update our meetup. Because keep in mind that our meetup has a many to many relation to the participants. So if we add a new participant to the database and we did add it because a user signed up for this meetup, we definitely want to add a connection to that created participant for that specific meetup. And for this in views py, I'll grab selected meetup and actually remove that from this get check here and add it in general in this try block so that I also have it available down there. And then here I will reach out to this selected meetup to participants there. So to this many to many field, which I defined. And on such a many to many field, we can now call the add method to add a new related record. So in this case, it's this participant, which we created here, which I want to add as a related record to my selected meter. And once that is done, we are done with saving that data to the database. Now, if we don't make it into this if block because the form is not valid, I want to render, I want to return that same meetup details page. So I will actually grab that render statement and add that after this if else block here so that we always return this rendered template no matter if we had a get or a post request. Of course, I don't want to return that though if validation succeeded and we saved data to the database. Then I don't want to return the meetup page again, but instead in this case, I want to redirect the user to a to be created confirmation page. And that's therefore what we'll add next. And of course you can also try this on your own as a practice. 
add a new URL and a new view and a new template to have some form of registration confirmation page.